Hey everybody, Rodham here. Thanks for tuning in to Stationeers. So last episode I asked for your input about uh, walling and the like. Blast? Oh yeah, yeah, this is the blast door. Outside blast console. Yep. Alright, so all of my slip consoles now work. Um, as proof that this door will open in a moment. Uh, so the input that you provided lets me know that the external of the base should look simple. Uh, keep it simple and then the internals I will try to stylize the best I can uh, so let's go inside real quick and take a look oh look at that it works and then if we let's say somehow end up on the wrong side of the door we can call it yeah there we go three way alright but it occurs to me before I do that Oh boy, do I not want to have to do this. Before I do that, I really ought to move. Not even ought to. I need to move these uh, solar panels. Because they are really ugly. Given the beauty of this base. And, uh, well, to be blunt and honest, uh, they are impinging on the, uh, you know, the, the build space. So, uh, I'm going to go out of the region just a little bit what I'm gonna do is wait until the frames disappear oh boy I have to go pretty far don't I maybe I don't want to wait until the frames disappear frames disappear after a long 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 time so I'm gonna wait until at least the solar power panels disappear which will mark the significant dis distance and that way uh, that way I don't have to look at them all the time all right, so we'll we'll put the solar arrays here. I think that's fair. Uh, another thing I could do is, unlike the first time I built them, uh, put them up a little bit higher. It won't really block significant sunlight, but uh, we'll get sun without having the mountains block us or whatever. Uh, let's switch backpacks here. So this is one of those janitorial tasks I was hoping to avoid, but alas, I haven't. Um, alright, let's see. Now, these uh, solar power panels can basically float until we um, move them. And that's probably what I'm going to do to them. And then additionally, we don't need multiple rows this time as we are designing it a little bit differently. So I could just have it on one wide uh, circuit or one wide uh, cable run. Which is significantly different than last time. Alright, I will put the sheets... Oh, no, I'll miss. I was going to try to put them in there, but... Uh, big old fail there. Now, one thing I could do, uh, so I don't have to do so much running and jetpacking, is leave some of the solar logic here at the base and just have the cables for data and power run out and back. Uh, it still does mean that I have significant amount of cable runs, but it's not quite as bad as it could be. Alright, so I have 10, or rather 20 panels. It's really weird to see them disappear like that. So if I do 10 on each side, that will be enough. And as I said, it's a long way for power to run, but uh, at least it will get it out of the vicinity and allow us to build and wall up unhindered by this ugly infrastructure project that's kind of cancerously attached onto the side. This is a project I wanted to avoid just because it's kind of lengthy and annoying and uh, honestly not particularly interesting to watch. I get it. Uh, but but if you're still watching episode, ooh, whatever this is, I don't even know, uh, then your tolerance for sort of janitorial uh, base cleanup is probably already pretty high or you're fast forwarding and you're never going to hear this explanation. Either way, I'm fine with it. Now the real trick is, I'm going to have to switch over quickly because um, 
I could put everything on nuclear power, uh, at least temporarily, um, <clears throat> by uh, installing the batteries in the APCs that I have as backup. Um, but why I need to do it quickly is I do actually have a base. If the base goes dark, it's not critical now. But I do have a base that's somewhat relying on this uh, power, right? And I'm going to be out for one sheet. So I don't want to leave the base dark for too long. Alright. Uh, I'll even weld up the middle one. I'll probably leave that empty though. Hope that's a straight run. I didn't really check. Kind of just, whoa, just eyeballed it. So, we do have some logic -y stuff that needs to move or change. I could actually leave it right there. Mm. Yeah, that's not harming anything. Uh, if I just put a frame there. And decide to deal with that off camera or later or something. And sometimes I really get the feeling like I'm Superman flying around. All right, where's my steel? Do you have steel? Nope. Do you have steel? Nope. That's in here? Yes. Now, I did uh, receive a lot of your feedback, and the overwhelming majority of it was outside, keep it simple, inside, specialize it to the space. And I got some interesting um, uh, sort of stylized stylistic suggestions that I, I rather like. So I'll be taking them. Alright, because I'm impatient for now, I'm only gonna make the one frame that I need. And slap that down. And then what I'm gonna need is a bunch of heavy and uh, normal cables to allow me to do a run all the way out there. And I'll probably wire it up ahead of time so that I, all I have to do is uninstall and reinstall. And I can do that at night uh, because the base is used to not having power at night. Uh, this might change once I uh, incorporate um, gas power generators or something like that. But for now, uh, I'm not going to be doing that. So uh, what was I doing? I was making cables. So we're going to need the copper and the gold. There we go. I'm going to do regular cables first. Just because they print up faster. And that gets me to lay down cabling sooner. Uh, so all we got to do is have the heavy cables and the regular cables. Um, honestly, there's a lot of cabling here already that I could reuse. Uh, but knowing that I'm probably going to use regular, uh, lots of re regular cables anyway, I might as well print some up. And what it will look like, let's go ahead and try to not have high tension cables up in the air, as I think that's, uh, maybe a little ugly. So we'll just run the cables like that. And yeah, they float. You don't, they don't gently drape on the ground or anything like that. You ask too much of this game in alpha. It's too bad I don't know how to do a superhero landing, huh? That would be pretty cool. And then once that's done, uh, I will start to... Actually, you know what I could do? I could start printing those up. Uh, wall. Kit. What were they called? Iron wall. Uh, they were just the walls. Uh, okay. Let's have you pop that out. I'll just finish this and then I can start printing up the walls. I don't think the auto lathe has them. We're gonna have to fabricate them 
which takes some extra time. I could do the outside as just composites. That would save me time. And composites look plain enough that uh, in the interest of keeping it simple, it would abide by that parameter. It almost looks like this cable's laying there, but it's just coincidental. Now, of course, you can run cables underground, uh, so I could have dug a tunnel and did this, and then also this cable might go underground. Nope, seems to be keeping above for now. So if you really don't want to have cables lying everywhere, you could dig a, a little tube between the tower and the base. That, that would that would work. All right, so let's go ahead and make the regular walls. I think that's uh, that's fair. And then for the inside, we'll do the sort of um, cool geodesic arched padded. It depends on the, the room, and it depends on the function. And I think that's probably what everyone wants, roughly. I can't satisfy everyone because everyone has their own idea of what looks good, but uh, as long as I make, as long as I address most of your feedback, I think that's uh, that's fair, right? So if you're interested in um, replicating this sort of um, power layout, definitely don't do what I did, which was to slap on uh, solar power panels basically on top of the base. You're going to have to probably deal with that later and it's easier to build it correct than to fix it down the line. All right, at this juncture, I'm going to corner this off so it avoids the, um, the building. I don't want it colliding. Uh, just scooting on by. And again, if I really care sometime in the polishing phase, I could uh, I could make these underground or so, uh, do something else with them. Or not even have solar power panels. Although there is no other easy way to generate power. Uh, I say easy because um, Solar power, once it's installed, really doesn't require any more inputs. It's not like the panels need cleaning or they break down for maintenance or anything like that. They're fine, whereas every other power source involves some sort of work. Uh, coal more than others, of course. If you power your base with coal, you are constantly feeding it more coal. Coal power begets mining. Um... Other forms have their own setbacks, so the turbines don't really generate... Oops. Bye-bye. The turbines don't really generate significant power. Um, it just... Yeah, they're, they're a novelty. Uh, sort of like... Uh, I'm not going to equate it to some real life. But yeah, they, uh, they're not going to power a base unless you have a microscopic base. And um, gas is great. Don't get me wrong, it generates plenty of power, it's just, it's not free. Solar, once you buy the investment, it's free. And that's probably why I tend to make my bases solar, because it's a set and forget sort of scenario. But if you're into the whole role playing, you know, you could spice it up. If you, whoops, that was incorrect. You could always make it more difficult for you to generate your power. Because, to be honest, uh, solar wouldn't be that. It, it's it's strong enough to power like a little rover, but it's not going to power a very, very large habitation. Not on Mars, unless you have giant panels and constant maintenance. Because the sun is not... The solar power that you can actually get from the sun is not very strong on Mars. Uh, Mars is significantly further from the sun than Earth is. And the percentage of solar light that gets to Mars is a teeny fraction of what gets to the Earth. Um, if you tried to harness solar power on Mercury, however, that would be a different matter. Uh, each planet has their own 
advantages and disadvantages in terms of uh, renewable resources. You know, if I was on Venus, I'd probably want uh, wind power or something like that. I don't know how fast the winds are on Venus, but uh, it has a thick atmosphere. You could maybe generate power that way. All right, so these cables here uh, that, that hold the data, they're going to need to make a run and connect with the power cable that I just laid out down there. And then the heavy cables, which I'm printing up a ton over here, I just realized. And walls. I'm actually probably going to need all those walls, but I'm not sure I'm going to need all those heavy cables. Uh, but I was yammering and not paying attention. Uh, those heavy cables are going to need to run all the way over as well. But again, probably don't need as many as I made. What is that connected to? I don't want to snip anything that shouldn't be snipped. Leaving the logic kind of alone. I can move the logic later if I so wish. I just don't want to fuss with it right now. All right, 49. Uh, this batch writer can't find any solar panels, uh, so it's blinking, but it will be able to. Wow! It'll be able to soon. Alright, uh, let's do the junctions then. Come on, spin. Oh, no. There we go. Soon I'll be able to, uh, take off my helmet and enjoy the base's air. It's exciting, right? I don't know how soon. I don't want to make any promises here, but, uh, I'm working towards it at least. It's a significant amount of cabling and materials that go into a big power grid. It is a, I would say, it's pretty fair to say it's a fair portion of what this game's about. Resource acquisition uh, being a primary driver. We are quite literally colonizing Mars and you, that you don't get to colonize Mars for free. Alright, uh, let's go move the solar power panels, if I could find them. So I'm going to grab all of the glass off the solar power panels. Again, not entirely certain I'm going to be able to do this uh, all within white night time. But, as I said, if the uh, atmospherics battery goes dry, oh well. You know, it, I'll... It, the, the base can go dry now. It, it won't be able to happily go without power for too long uh, once it's fully constructed, but for now, for now there's not so much a penalty. Uh, Alright, just putting the panels in my backpack when they're uh, uninstalled. They only stack to five, and I don't want to have to chase them as they fall in the dark. Okay, and now flying over. All right, so data will face back and power faces front. Like that. And I'm gonna lay these out. One giant array. Now because of the angle of the sun, you could have a field of these uh, but the inputs and outputs would, I can tell you, get a little annoying. Uh, if you had a, like a field of solar power panels. 
So, just warning you about designing it that way. Um, it's possible. It just might be more annoying than you f wish it to be. Alright, uh, I guess I messed up and skipped one. I was wondering about that. Alright, let's put that down correctly. And give them all glass, and here comes daybreak. I didn't manage to finish this. In fact, we might even go an entire day with no power. That's just the way it's going to be. I'm the fastest technician in the Martian sphere of influence, I don't know, in the West. Okay, there we go. They're all glassed up. Uh, Alright, let's venture over here and grab the heavy cables. I haven't hooked up the logic yet, but I can also start grabbing heavy cables. And of course I did manufacture a bunch as well. Alright, so the heavy cables come up here, but they don't need to anymore. Uh, they don't need to make the run all the way up, so the run's going to be a little bit different. Right, let's put that away. Alright, that's a bunch of heavy cables. And I can, uh, de-weld this so I can trim those heavy cables in there. Because the heavy cables are going to come from here now, right? This is where the batteries are fed into. Um, so all of this heavy cable is essentially unnecessary now. Everything that goes up to where they, the old solar power panels were is all defunct. And some of it seems to be inside of a window. So if I want to reclaim that cost, I have to go dig around in, in those frames. I could probably just buzzsaw the frame. And by buzzsaw, I mean angle grind. Alright, there's another stack of 50. As you can see, yeah, this project was big in scope originally. Alright, so if we want to regain the other cables, rather than to leave them installed and um, not doing anything, we gotta do some cutting here. I'm just gonna put the other frames down. Plop. There's one, two, and three. Huh, I guess I got that one. Oh, because the, the frame was missing. Uh, then the cables that lead into this frame here can be removed. Let's put these frames back. And then wrench out here. Uh, cool. Okay, good. I was wondering if it was going to stay there. Reclaim this cable as well. Alright, so now the logic is ready to be reconnected. And the heavy cables, I have plenty of them. And they're ready to be run. Uh, hang on. I don't so much need that anymore. Uh-oh. Alright, so we need to pick up that network from down here. I need more regular cables, uh, but let's also send a run of heavy cables as well, right after I weld this up. Hmm. 
right? So the first thing we could do is to start plugging these in to one another. Let's do a bunch of three-way junctions. And given the capacity of the heavy cables, you're not, unless you have a giant, giant solar power grid, uh, you're not going to blow these heavy cables out, which is, which is good. Their tolerances allow for giant solar shenanigans without much complaint. stack there we go my jetpacks at this elevation uh, slowly lower me as you can see I'm constantly hitting spacebar to fight the drop maybe it's an altitude thing I don't think so doesn't really matter it's not bothering me as long as it's I work fast And the net positive of doing this is, all right, it won't be in our way. So that's one of the pros to move in it. Uh, we can wire it up cleaner than we did before. That's another pro of moving it. Because sloppy wiring, although works, uh, hurts the efficiency part of my brain, which says you could do it better, you could do it smarter. Uh, and then the other advantage is it's very easily extendable. If we want to add more solar to the whole network, all I really got to do is slap a frame, slap a cable, slap a solar panel, and we're done. And we can extend this. We have, what, 20? We can extend this 80 more or something. I, I didn't do the math, but we're not close to the capacity of these heavy cables. So uh, plenty of room for expansion. All right, so there is the heavy cables, and now we do the south bit, or bottom bit, not really south. Yep. And then go grab some of the cables that were all printed up and start, uh, start running all the power that these solar power panels are generating over to the batteries that are probably I bet the atmospherics battery is probably empty by now, or nearing empty. Light All right, so as you can see, all wired up, plugged in. Yeah, the atmospheric's battery is dead. It's that purple battery up there, because I color-coded them. And before you all recommend a stacker, I'm not planning on adding anything to this starter base. And I mean anything. I'm not planning on adding a stacker until I get a actual workshop room. All right, so we're picking up the power here. So let me turn my light on. And run sort of a wavy corner pattern. I don't love it, but that's what we'll do. Over to the other side. And then run that over to the to our uh, power. Actually, you know what? Uh, it's too ugly. It's too, it's just too ugly. All right, what I'm gonna, oh, no. Wrong cable, wrong cable. Vitals down. Yeah, if there's any cable not to snip, it's the green vitals cable. And yet there, I snipped it. It will survive. Uh, all right, so what I was gonna do is run this downwards. And 
everything in this base behind this wall is going to just be invisible. So this could just run along the wall here. And then I will run it out. Yeah, that's a little bit neater. So let me snip this off. Okay. And then this is going to switch sides of the base. Like that. We want to pick up the err. Yes, I need to avoid that. Where plumbers and electricians hate each other is when their work zones overlap. All right, there we go. And I'll run the cables. Uh, I'm just gonna run it right through here as if that frame doesn't exist. I'm not going to make any concessions for that system. Yeah, if you were a real neat freak, you'd probably want to run these underground. But, uh... Underground cables may sound like a good idea. It's a lot of work. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. It's just, I'm warning you, it's a lot of work. I've done a base like that, but only small bases. Really, really large projects, forget it. I ain't got time for that. All right. So now this is plugged in. Actually, it looks like I'm going to need more heavy cables than this. Uh, okay, so I can make some. I already made a bunch. Uh, let's see. Corner around. And now for the run. And what I'll do is probably rendezvous this cable with uh, the other cable so that they can r make their runs together. Oops, too close. So it should be a little higher as well. I'll just... What I'll do is... Uh, I will just mimic it up here. So this is... One step over from the wall. So it's like that. Right? That's symmetrical other than the fact that one's heavy and one's light. Okay, so we'll pick this up. Voila, I'm out of heavy cables, but uh, we're pretty close to being done with the run. And then we just run the power over here and connect right there. And then I also need light cables to do the same for the data. And the uh, regular cables need to run from here down there okay well now I need uh, now I know what I need to do uh, let's go ahead and I thought I had too many heavy cables but I was dreadfully wrong I had too few uh, and while we print some more up I will start stacking walls they stack to 30 so I'm gonna have multiple stacks of walls And for now, I can just leave the walls out here. Um, I'm going to leave the sample walls here, though. The arched, the geometric, the flat, and the padded. In case there is parts of the interior that should have a different look to them. Uh, so we might as well keep them as a reference. Sort of like a, a paint guide. Like a, a, a paint swatch. 
but in this case it's not a swatch it's it's the actual uh, wall itself funny how Myers works right Right, that looks about right. It might be ugly, but it will be symmetrically ugly. That's what people can say about uh, my face. Oh, you have such a symmetrical, yet still somehow ugly face. What's funny to me, uh, to get real off topic because I'm throwing cables down, and if you need an explanation as to why I'm throwing cables down, you're probably so lost in this video it doesn't even matter what I say. Uh, it's funny to me that um, that uh, for aesthetics, symmetry is so pleasing to us. I think because a biologically healthy specimen will be more or less symmetrical. Um, no offense to the hunchback in Notre Dame. Um, yeah. Because I definitely, growing up, I had, I wouldn't say like an OCD obsession, but uh, I really wanted things to be symmetrical. When I played with blocks, or when I, uh, Legos, or drawing, really, whatever I was doing, symmetry was a heavy driver. And it's, I do find it interesting that things like uh, fractals, and the golden ratio, and symmetry, um, you know, that kind of stuff you find yourself just drawn towards um, you know and then if there's a lack of symmetry done for a very specific reason like I don't know why but the Millennium Falcon came to mind um, Millennium Falcon is still mostly symmetrical but it's stylized instead of because if you can imagine if the if the Millennium Falcon was a perfect circle uh, it would just look like a, a UFO disc, and it would not be iconic. And the changes they made, the changes that whoever designed it, Lucas or whoever it was, made to it, um, changed it for, you know, to make it more iconic. A perfectly symmetrical car, uh, right-left symmetry is always almost achieved. Uh, I can't really think of a lot of cars that don't have right-left symmetry other than, like, the Nissan Cube. And that car is pretty universally hated because it looks ugly. Because it's not symmetric. Well, it's ugly for other reasons, but it's also not right-left symmetrical. Uh, you know, most vehicles, for instance, are symmetrical. Uh, a lot of houses are not perfectly symmetrical, but somewhat symmetrical. Um, yeah, so fashion clothing uh, if, unless it has a label you know you you tend to have um, rough symmetry you know you most of my pants have pockets on both sides not just one um, front and back as well although I gotta say the shirt pockets uh, don't on men's and my guess is so that it doesn't look like uh, mammaries maybe you don't have two pockets, one on the left, one on the right. For whatever reason, I'd be curious. I could always look it up why uh, men's shirts and dress shirts. There's always a pocket on the left. The breast pocket. And uh, it tends to be on one specific side. And not on both sides. I've been cheated my whole life. I could have used another pocket. I suppose, like... Tackle vests and stuff have pockets everywhere. They're not so much concerned with fashion. They're object of utility. And as you can imagine, uh, my brain wanders to weird places when I'm not uh, working hard. This is this is very much grunt work, manual labor. All right, so it looks like we need like six more or so. I could put on. Uh, does this even have batteries? Yeah, batteries, but it's low. I was going to say I could put on my night vision goggles and see the world a bunch bit differently. Yeah, I haven't actually used the night vision goggles much. Uh, but I don't really know if it would honestly help me <laughs> work in the dark any better. I could definitely see where I'm going. 
without a flashlight, so maybe that part is helpful. Uh, but I find it pretty hard to tell depth here. No, I mean, it, it has its uses. I really, actually, I, I, I take it back. It does... I could definitely traverse a little bit easier um, than, when, uh, than without them. Yeah, as you can see, I really can't see what I'm doing or where I'm going. I don't know. There's a lot of really cool new features to Stationeers that once I get a pressurized base, I can start to sink my teeth into, and I'm really eager to do it. Um, like trade beacons and rovers and motherships. Whoa, but there's some crazy stuff that happens. Uh, all right, at this point, we need, what, regular cables? Nope, nope. I said regulars. And it looks like uh, another one of our batteries has died. And as you can see, we could sort of tell roughly what batteries are taxed the most as a sort of idea of if we were to add additional power storage, uh, who would need it? And the answer pretty clearly is atmospherics and then... Uh, well, the thing is, we're not really air conditioning or heating anything yet, so I'm sure that system will need extra juice as well. There does seem to be a weird bright flash that's occurring every now and then. That's not me. That's the solar power. Or the, uh, night vision goggles. Alright. Here we go. Our cable run. And then I might need to sort of reboot the logic for this. I'm not sure. We'll see. Oh, I'm so close. I'm like two tiles away. But it should be up and running and refilling those batteries in no time. So let's get this off. Oh, you know what might be going on? Uh, sometimes when you pick up items, you like put it really closely in front of your face. Yeah, that's what's going on. Right as I, right when I grab an item, I like place it in front of my face really close and that's what's causing the bright flashes because the the object is right in front of my face for a, a flash of a, a second and then it looks like uh, really bright like that all right so this is the logic cable Solar power panels, providing that I've plugged it in correctly, and it does appear to be correct. They don't. Oh, uh, this cable doesn't connect to anything. Yes. Why should it work? It shouldn't. Uh, let's go and get these goggles off. I'll leave them on my head, though. Wow, that is hard on my eyes. I can imagine it is equally difficult for you to adjust. Yikes. That was, um,. It's like, I don't know, my brain seized or something. I don't, uh, in real life, I'm a little photosensitive, not to the point where, like, it's a medical issue. I just don't, bright lights, I find a little harsh on the eyes, usually, and, uh, that transition <laughs> between night vision and daylight was a rough one. Sort of like when you come out of, like, a movie theater, you know, uh, and it, it's, your eyes are totally not ready for, uh, for daytime. Alright, I am gonna need just a few more regular cables. Thought I had enough, but I'd be wrong. I feel like I'm, uh, uh, look at my little avatar with the night vision goggles on. I am robot, ready to destroy.
<laughs> I can't get over how funny he looks. Uh, how funny do I look? I can't even see myself. Uh, what is what is the look but not pan? There, shift. Oh yeah. Light on. Light on. I feel like I'm ready to go kill some xenomorphs. All I need is a energy rifle and. Uh, Yep, but I digress. Okay, so, again, uh, I guess you have one more episode to provide feedback for Walling. So if you have failed to provide your feedback, uh, go ahead and do so. Because it seems like the only project I really got to today was solar tracking. Or rather, the moving of solar. If we take a look, energy, 99%. So these are all working. Uh, that took me two days time. And the batteries are charging. Cool. Uh, let's see if we can alleviate some of the pressure on that. Uh... On the atmospherics battery. Uh, there's a teeny bit of gas in there, but, you know, it's not much yeah so that just probably alleviated a lot we are at 2.5 kilowatt hour and it's 1.4 yep it took it down by a whole kilowatt a little bit more in fact uh, so now as you can see we have this weird nodule that we could eventually move uh, but most of the solar power grid uh, will not physically be in the way of our base so that we can have beautiful, uh, a beautiful independent building standing there, like a, a Russian block apartment complex or something. I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. Um, one last thing, I'm going to test the door. I have no reason to believe it won't work, but make sure that I can call it from the inside, just so that I can never get stuck. Because getting stuck would suck. I've been in some bases where you're stuck, and if it's full of gases, the real problem is the only way to get out of that thing is to dig your way out. Uh, like, bust a hole in the wall, which vents your entire base out. So there we go. We've got the solar power grid moved. Uh, and I apologize for not doing more. But uh, that was a pretty big mega project, right? 20 solar power panels. Okay. Well, if you have any feedback for me, questions of any type, drop me a line. Like I said, you have yet another uh, week to, or not week, a few days, to provide uh, feedback on walling. If you got any design tips or screenshots for me to look at, hop on Discord too. It's a great place to discuss. I'll catch you all later. Thanks for watching. Adios.